Hey guys, so originally this was going to be one long conspiracy video, but it was way too long, so we decided to split it into two parts. So this is the start of part two. If you haven't seen part one yet, please check that out as well. It's linked below. And have fun listening to the rest of our conspiracies. Number five, coat slash present day quoth is a Chandrian because he killed Cinder and took over the post? <laughs> took over the position? <laughs> yes. <laughs> took over Cinder's job? Yeah. Alright, go ahead. I will I will don the cap <laughs> for this one. Don the cap. Uh, <laughs> the conspiracy what, what is this? The tinfoil hat of shame. Alright, yes. let's go. <laughs> so to start off, in chapter six of book one, Chronicler says some are even saying that there is a new Chandrian, a fresh terror in the night, his, his hair as red as the blood he spills. So there's already a theory about this going around in that world. So you know what? This is real. <laughs> so we have this whole folly concept that is hovering over Quoth throughout this entire series. Uh, we're always like, what is the folly? What is this big terrible thing that Quoth did that messed up everything? Uh, so in chapter three of book one, we're introduced to the sword that Quoth has named Folly. He did something involving the sword that there was no good explanation for, and very good reasons for him not to have done. And Bast's reaction to the sword is very concerned. Like, in that scene when he brings the sword in, or uh, he, you know, he gets the, the plaque, and he's like, oh, I'm gonna put the sword here. Bass is like, wait, are you sure? Like, that's, I don't know. <laughs> it's not, not a good idea. Uh, like, he doesn't like it. He's shocked that Quoth wants to hang it up in the middle of the bar. He's like, horrified, actually, is the term that they use. Um, also, apparently Bass has been keeping it, like, under his bed. So I guess Quoth, like, went up there and got it. <laughs> yeah, you <laughs> still got my sword under there. There it is. <laughs> Let's get it out. So I guess Quoth did something terrible with it, and then gave it to Bass to keep away from him, but now he wants to, Let's to display, display it, it to remind himself of his folly. He's emo? Uh, anyway, the point of this being that the sword is a bad omen, and it's somehow related to folly, right? Um, so the theory- Does Cinder have a sword? He sure does. So the theory would be that the sword is actually Cinder's sword. And that Quoth eventually ends up killing Cinder and taking his sword, or being forced to take his sword. Not knowing that if you kill a Chandrian, you have to take its place, maybe. Like, if there always have to be seven of them or something, like they're the Sith or something, you know? Like, can only ever have to be seven, and if you kill one, you become that seven. I don't know, maybe that's how it works. Um, so, maybe Quoth killed Cinder in an impulsive moment of terrible decision making, as he is known to do. Like, maybe as revenge for what Cinder did to his parents, and or uh, revenge for what he's done to Denna. Um, but, obviously, he doesn't know that he has to become a Chandrian, like, if he does that. So that's what the folly is. Like, whoops, I'm a Chandrian now. And so now he has this sword as a mark of his position that he is now either like embracing or trying to prove he's not actually one of them. I don't know. I don't know why he's displaying it with such like a cheery disposition. It's weird. Um, or perhaps it could be that he didn't necessarily become a Chandrian after killing Cinder, but like killing him led to some other terrible thing and thus the folly. Um, so there's also this connection of the Chandrian to the folly in what Ben's inscription in his book says, where he says, remember your father's song, be wary of folly. So, which implies to me that the folly has something to do with his father's song, which is about the Chandrian, uh, which led to his father's folly, really. So that could be like, don't go get them. Don't follow the same folly that your father had. Don't call them. Yeah. Don't interact with them. Right. Another reason behind this theory is that the term Rinta is used by the Adem to describe the Chandrian, either as a word that just straight up means Chandrian or like a term that means a terrible demon thing, but they pretty much say it's like worse than just a normal demon thing. Um, and they pretty much confirm that they are referring to the Chandrian when they use that term. Um, so in book one, chapter 88, 
when the skinwalker comes into the inn in the present day and attacks them, it says it's looking for something. Like, it's like trying to speak English, but it can't, and it's saying like, looking, looking. And then it says like, in this fairy language or some other language, it says like, words like, te, rinta, a. Like, it's, it's not spelled exactly the same way, like there's an e on the end, but it, I would assume it's pronounced relatively the same. Rinta, rinte, something like that. But it's basically asking, like, the te in that sentence is very indicative of, like, are you, you know, like, a question in that language, like, te rinte, te blah blah blah, like, are you this? You like, could just be like, that? where are they at? Yeah, like, so ask, where well, is the rinta? Where are my homies? Right. <laughs> yeah. You killed them, <laughs> but bitch. Like, like <laughs> why is it coming into quotes in looking for the Chandrian if he ain't one? You know, like maybe he's like, I heard there was one in this town. Is it you? Like, <laughs> so you? I don't know. It came in there looking for a Chandrian for whatever reason. And did it find one? I don't know. Maybe. My reason for being like, nah, was gonna be like, well, he doesn't have black eyes. So, oh. but I guess you can make yourself look like different people. Yeah. So he just make himself look normal. I mean, I, I don't disagree. <laughs> That like the folly is related to Chandran, or maybe even the sword is related to Chandran, but I don't know if he like is yeah. Cinder now. Yeah, I don't. I don't know if I. Feel I mean, like he's not going around either. killing people. Yeah. That we know of. I mean, my stance is like I could believe any theory because there's no facts, so it could be true. But I feel a little more iffy about that one. Like I think the like oh they say there's a new Chandran. Like I feel like it's just like a bad rumor. Yeah. And it doesn't necessarily mean that that's the truth. Yeah. Yeah. He's, I don't know, like, if he was Cinder, why would he just be like, I'm just gonna go make an inn and just well, chill here mm, so they can't well, find me? Like, how would they not be able to sense each other? Yeah. Surely they would come for him and be like, no, no, no. Yeah. You're one of us now. Why are you sitting here with your assistant, like, <laughs> cooking? Like, I don't yeah. know. It's, it doesn't make sense to me, yeah. but, like, I don't know how the Chandrian works, so I could yeah. be wrong. I don't know either. Yeah. Number four, my favorite. Fast is, quote, son. Oh, boy. <laughs> Should this be a tinfoil? I mean... So here's Can I put it like half on? <laughs> yeah. So here's the thing. <laughs> We're fools and uh, <laughs> forgot that in like book one, chapter 13, it literally says Bast, son of Remen. <laughs> but wasn't it a real theory? Like, didn't you encounter the theory in the wild? Yeah, you're the I one that brought it the up. the wild, yeah. Like, people say this. Yeah, yeah. So. We're not that much of a fool. Right. Alright, so the initial reasoning behind this is just the fact that, like, Bast is so weird and, like, has such a weird- <laughs> <laughs> The reason is, Bast is so weird. They must be related, <laughs> obviously. No, like, Bast- Okay, let me rephrase that. Bast's relationship with Quoth is mm -hmm. so weird and, like, confusing mm -hmm. and- like, seems much more than just student master to me, like, like, from his point of view at least, because it's like, he cares so deeply, and like, I don't know, like, why does he care so much? Like, if he's only known him for two years, Right, too, yeah, that's the thing, it's like, like, he's only known him for two years. I'll take your bloody teeth. Right, like, like, yeah, like, that? they live together here in this inn, like, you know, he, he called, like, is the term Reshi, does that mean teacher or does it mean father, IDK? Um, so, and it would stem from, like, Quoth and Falurian getting together and, like, somehow that turned into Bast. <laughs> what do you mean somehow? <laughs> do we need a biology lesson no. right here? We went over this with, um, Pen Penth. Yeah, no, okay. I, don't, I don't need her to explain Pen it Pennant squares. <laughs> Science. <laughs> Um, no, Genetics. just the fact that, like, Quoth has slept with a fairy woman in, you know, that's Like a, a billion times. Right, and then, like, Bast is a fairy creature. <laughs> Bast is the Prince of Twilight, and Falurian is the Lady of Twilight, so, like... Which is pretty suspicious to me. Yeah, it is. Because at first I didn't believe this theory at all, and then you pointed that out, and then I was like... <laughs> but then we got shot down. <laughs> right. <laughs> we got shot down. Well, I was gonna say also, like... In the way they interact is very like father-child like 
do this thing. I don't want to do this thing. Like <laughs> you're Reshi. going to school whether you like it or not. Yeah, like oh, Reshi. Like <laughs> so. Like if you read lines where he uses that term, oh my god, term, it's it's so great. Wait, yeah. let me see if I can find. <laughs> You keep talking because it was like one of this first. Oh yeah, it's right, it's right here. <laughs> it's immediate. have you been drinking? No. The innkeeper raised an eyebrow. <laughs> like, just imagine this, okay? Like, that's why I want it to be true because it's so funny. Oh my god. <laughs> Go ahead. Anyway, but we burst our own bubble <laughs> because I was researching this and I was like, you know, in chapter 13, when he literally introduces Bast to Chronicler, he literally says, This is Bast, son of Remen, Prince of Twilight, blah blah blah. Uh, so, that's a thing. But, who the heck is Remen? Like, who is this? Who is this fairy king man thing? I don't know. Like, is it still related to Felurian? Because why is she still Lady of Twilight? Like, it's still the Twilight thing. So that's still suspicion. But like, you know, I had to spit it again. I'm, I'm trying really hard. So maybe Quoth was in the Fey world for so long with Felurian, the Lady of Twilight, that he actually himself became the King of Twilight and was given this name Remen. Like maybe that's Quoth's fairy name. Uh, like maybe he himself doesn't even know this. Maybe it was decreed after he left Florian, like by her, maybe she decreed this, and maybe Bast then meets Quoth later in life and tells him that he is the son of Remen and Prince of Twilight, while full knowing knowing full well that he actually is his father, but not telling Quoth that. But instead, Bast somehow convinces Quoth to be his teacher. So this whole time, Quoth thinks that he's just his student. Quoth thinks that Bast is the son of this fairy king, but only Bast knows that the fairy king is actually Quoth himself. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> and maybe this is why Bast acts so protectively. Yeah, yeah, thank you. <laughs> maybe this is why Bast acts so protectively and intensely towards him and cares about him so much. Because he actually knows that he is his father, but he can't tell him that. So maybe the term Reshi is either like a fairy term for father, uh, and Quoth would have no knowledge of that. Or maybe it's just some term that Bast made up that means father. <laughs> Like, I don't know, Bast is Cray. Like, he, he can do anything. It doesn't even matter that it says that Bast is 150 years old, because the Fey world works differently than the human world. Like, maybe he was in the Fey world for 150 years, sure. Like, that doesn't mean he can't pop out anywhere and present himself as an 18-year-old human, you know? Like, maybe Bast is a liar, and he's not actually 150 years old. Maybe that's just part of his cover story. Like, maybe he came out and was like, alright, I'm gonna find my father, I'm gonna make up this whole backstory, and, like, get him to, you know, teach me, and I want to just protect him and not tell him the truth. And... I think that is more likely. <laughs> that Bass is That Bass just lied about yeah. his age <laughs> and his, like, parentage than whatever you said about Florian being like, you're the king now. Like, I mean, maybe now. they were together for so I long it became it. a common law marriage, no. and he's the king now. <laughs> How do you feel about this theory? I, I really want it to be true, but I don't think it is. <laughs> Um, well, okay, so the thing is, at first, when this theory came about in our discussion, I, I love it as a theory because it just makes their interactions even more hilarious. And also, like, Quoth is so shitty and Bast is so shitty. It's like karma. Like, you know, you have to take care of your shitty child <laughs> and that's doing all these whack things and you're responsible <laughs> oh my for him. So I just love it. But... At first, I was like, I don't really think it's true because, like, I couldn't imagine Florian like, having a child. Yeah. <laughs> like, well, like, why? She just bangs people all day, every day. That's all she does. Like, again, I don't know how fairy fertility works, but, like, surely she can prevent herself from having a child. Like, she wouldn't want to be having all these children. Like, I can't imagine her raising a child. Like, surely she would just, like, get rid of it somehow. <laughs> so I was like, I doubt it. But... I don't know, some of the things kind of make sense, like the Twilight thing I think is strange. So then I kind of started to believe it a little bit more. Then we got this whole Remen, Ramon, what's his name? Raymond. I don't know. Raymond. Got that. So I feel like, I feel like it's not true, but I want it to be. I, I want it to be like, true. I 100% think it's not true. <laughs> like, I wish it was true, but I don't true. think it is. <laughs> like, 
sorry. I mean, I really tried to make it sound <laughs> true, but... Well, no, I think I think Bast just lying is yeah, more likely yeah. than your little scenario, but yeah. thanks for trying. Number three, University is the Amir. So, there is a door of stone at the university, or a door that no one knows how to open, and is hella sketch. And it's being guarded by and protected by the university. So, if the shapers of the old times are locked behind the doors of stone, which Thalurian says that they are, and the emir are set to guard them, which, you know, could be true. I don't know what the emir are doing, but if they're supposed to be the good ones, you know, the good people that guard things for the greater good, that would be a reason why the university would be involved with, or associated with, or part of the emir, because they are guarding that specific door. Or if the emir themselves are trying to open the door for whatever reasoning they're doing, because we don't really know if the emir are good or bad, technically, uh, that would also be a reason for them to be in control of it. So just the fact that this door exists and the university is in control of it is suspicious. So the reasoning behind this door being associated with the emir relates to the lackless door. And in Wiseman's Fear, chapter 59, it says, on the oldest part of the lackless lands, there is a secret door, a door without handle or hinges. There's no way of opening it. No one knows what's on the other side. So basically, that's the same kind of description as the door in the university. So it's like a random door with no handles and no way to open it. No one knows what's behind it. And then we have the Cathay telling Quoth that the mayor has already come close to the emir, though he doesn't realize it. Stick by him and he will lead you to their door. And then the Cathay laughs because he made a joke about that. And it says, whatever else you might forget, remember what I just said, eventually you'll get the joke. So one can assume that the joke is this connection between the lackless door and a door to the emir. Like, because the mayor now has this connection to the lackless through marrying Meliwan, and therefore he now has a connection to the lackless door. So if the Cathay is making a joke that the door to the emir is actually this lackless door, then the emir have some connection to the lackless door, which implies that they have some connection to the door at the university because it's implied that those two doors are the same type of door, if not the same door themselves. Next, <laughs> we have the fact that there is no useful information about the emir in the archives. And right when Quoth arrives at the university and goes to the archives in chapter 38, he asks the scribes for books about the emir, and immediately after he does that, Lauren appears and pulls him aside and tells him that he shouldn't be looking into the emir, and basically like trying to make him believe that they originated in a tour and that they're just a story and like you just stop looking into it, like, you know, you don't want people to think you're foolish for looking into this kind of thing. So it's like very suspicious that he immediately like tries to set him off the track of the emir. Uh, in book two, Quoth continues trying to research the emir, and in chapter 41, he discovers that the emir might have secret allies and secret members that might exist today, and immediately after he says that exact thing to Simon, Lauren appears behind him and suspends him from the archives for talking to someone at another table, which is like such a BS reason for being suspended. So is that really the reason why I suspended him? Or is it just because he's like, I told you to stop researching this, get out of here. Like, you're gonna discover us. <laughs> like, <laughs> um, like, he doesn't want him to find out that the emirs still have secret members today because they are the secret members. So then we have the concept that the emir have gone around and purposely removed all evidence of themselves from places, kind of like the Chandrian do. Uh, which Quoth finds out in chapter 48, and also discusses in chapter 137 with the mayor, where they say, it seemed as if someone had removed information about the emir from the archives. And who would do such a thing? Who would have better reason than the emir themselves? So that absolutely confirms to me that the emir went and took stuff out of the archives. And then in charge of the archives. Right, like, but the master archivist is not just gonna let anyone waltz in there and take stuff out of the archives, you know? Like, he's in control. Mm -hmm. Like, they're not- people aren't just allowed to come in and, like, get rid of stuff. So, like, there's no other explanation 
than Master Lauren, at the very least, being connected to the Amir or like any past Master Archivist or the University Masters as a whole, like having some connection to the Amir, either like letting them come in and do that and being like in cahoots with them, or they themselves are the ones doing that. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think at, at least Lauren, because like you said, Lauren was all like, don't research bad things yeah. and like, you know, was like, stop. So I think definitely Lauren is, if they're not Amir involved with them somehow, Amir affiliated once again, Amir adjacent. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, it could, it could be some or all of them, or it could just be that the university itself, because like, you know, we said the door is there. So maybe they want to like protect the door. Maybe they need help from the Amir to protect the door. So they're just homies with them. And they're right. like, okay, yeah, we'll do this for you. We'll get rid of all your yeah. info. I think this is likely. Yeah, like I do definitely think up, this is... Up there with Cinder is Ash yeah. in, in likelihood. Yeah, like, definitely. Yeah. Number two! Chandrian are actually good? Or they're just trying to convince people that they're good so they can take over the world. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Chandrian propaganda scheme. So, uh, there are some stories that Quoth found about the Chandrian in the archives in chapter 14 of Wise Man's Fear that said that they were not hurting anyone and they're just out here stealing pies. <laughs> just out here. Just out here, you know. Uh, the one poem that he found specifically said, they never scratch and they never bite, they never fight, they never fuss. In, in fact, they are quite nice to us. <laughs> you get so intense. So like, why include something like that, something that says this, when we have this whole time been led to believe that they are purely evil because they murdered his entire family. Like, there's no other, like, there's no reason to make us think that they are good. Like, why even put that in the story if it doesn't have some meaning? So then there's this other entry that he finds in chapter 16 um, about them that is some person describing how they all know nothing about them and that they're a frustrating and profitless area of inquiry. Uh, but what's weird about that specific description, or that excerpt from the book that he's reading, um, is that it's written in the same way that Denna's letter is written. Mm. That being, uh, random letters are capitalized in words mm -hmm. uh, for seemingly no reason. So if we compare that to the theory of Denna using random capital letters in order to like imbue this written down magic, into what she's writing in order to control people and make them think a certain way, then this person who wrote this is could also be trying to make the world stop looking into the Chandrian altogether, like, so that people don't get hurt, maybe, or so that they don't interfere with what the Chandrian are trying to do. I don't know. It's just very suspicious. So propaganda number two is Denna's song, uh, which depicts Lon Ray as a hero rather than as a villain. And we know that her patron, Cinder, <laughs> was the one giving her the information to use in her song. And like, he's helping her write it in the first place. And according to Quoth, Denna eventually goes out and spreads this song to the world and it becomes an extremely famous song. Mm. So she, like being directed by the Chandrian in theory, is out here spreading that Lanre is good the whole time. <laughs> so, and the world, I, I don't know if they believe it, but it sure is a famous song. So why are the Chandrian trying to convince the world that they are good? Well, <laughs> perhaps they need people in all corners of the world to believe that they are good so that they can take over and then be able to reincarnate Lanre or break the curse on him because we know that the Chandrian go after and kill everyone who has any knowledge of them, and they destroy all the evidence of them being depicted as evil. But what do they have that still exists? There's that one poem they found, where they were good. And there's Dennis' song, which they clearly didn't go track her down and murder her for writing. Uh, even though it's like about them straight up. Uh, because it's depicting them, or at least Lonre, in a good light. Indicating that when Cinder says, someone's parents have been singing the entirely wrong sorts of songs, he could mean they're singing songs about us being evil, so they had to die. But if they had been singing songs about us being good, they're fine, like Denna. But if they do have a connection to Denna and she is directly working with them, slash they are the ones feeding her this information to write about, 
is the reason that they're trying to convince the world of this just so they, that they can live a peaceful life of people not thinking that they're evil? I don't know. Or is it just so they can brainwash the world and then take control and then be able to do whatever they want and break the curse that's on them? Or, alternatively, are they truly actually good or rather not fully evil? Because yes, obviously people who are running around killing people are not good, but are they doing it for their own means or is it actually for the greater good of the world? Like, which is what the Amir were said to do, you know, they can go kill people if it's for the greater good and people still think that they are heroes. So maybe the Amir are the wrong ones all along and the Chandrian are trying to oppose them because they are the ones doing wrong. But the whole world has the opposite view, so the Chandrian are trying to stamp out the world view by killing everyone who says that they're evil, while simultaneously trying to promote the positive Chandrian agenda, while also working towards opening the doors of stone so they can fight the Amir and whoever else is actually seen as the protectors of the world. Because, like, depictions of the Amir in this have been both positive and negative as well. Like, yes, we are mostly led to believe that they were the good guys, but then there are moments, such as when the girl Nina gives Quoth in chapter 35 of Wise Man's Fear, she gives him the picture that she drew of the uh, Chandrian, and she describes the Amir person in that picture as the scariest one of them all, and like, the worst is what she says, and she's the most afraid of him, and she painted him with the names of the angels on his shoulders, like, because she was so afraid of him. Which, like, lol at her because those are actually the Amir themselves, their names, but, you know, she don't what know What a shit. dumb bitch. <laughs> <Yeah>. Damn. <laughs> um, so ultimately, the question is, like, which ones are good and which ones are evil this whole time, I think. Like, I don't know. Like, are the Chandrian the good ones and the Amir are actually evil, or are the Chandrian really the evil ones and the Amir are the good ones? Like, I don't know. Well, I think murdering everyone that says you're bad automatically makes you bad. Yes. So I think they're both bad. <laughs> I, think I think there might be like, there could be like another side to it that we mm -hmm. are not expecting. They're just like Dinah, they have to act bad, right. but they don't want to be. Right, maybe. I don't All know. Alright. It's time right. for number one. Put this on. I have to put this on? Yes. <laughs> Alright, here to put we go. Number one! The long play door plan, aka Chloe's Conspiracy Corner. <clears throat> so, background information that we already went over. Door in the university equals the lackless door equals door the shapers question mark are in. <laughs> lackless family equals descended from Laundry Lyra. I think just like they're a, that they're a really ancient family. I mean, maybe because like Quoth and Laundre have parallels with each other, so they could be like great great great, great, great grandpa. grandpa. <laughs> University professors, or at least some Amir or Amir affiliated. This is not related to them being the Amir specifically, but and then I wish I had a page for this, but I don't. But it happens. Um, the Chancellor acted like he knew who Quoth's father was, or had a reaction about his father during his first university interview when he said. Uh, who's your father? And he's like, Arladen or whatever his name is. And he was like, oh, that guy. So they know who his father is, which, I mean, his father's just some random, like, trooper, so why would they at the university know? But if the university, as the Emir, who are having the lackless door, are keeping tabs on the lacklesses, then they would know that Mrs. Mom Lady was a lackless and went off with this dude, so they would have that information. So, meeting him, being like, oh, this dude's my dad, they know, oh, this guy has lackless blood. Mm -hmm. Put a pin in that. This is more background information. Brayden equals Cinder, or Cinder slash Chandrian affiliate, because sketch as hell, interest in Quoth for no reason, <laughs> nose game fairies no, rumors about him being sketch in the woods, this is just a, a recap of earlier, Cinder doing bandit things in the woods, Raiden equals Dena's patron equals Cinder question mark. Alvaron has come close to the Amir, but maybe he doesn't know it. And kind of went over that too, because he married Blackless Lady, mm -hmm. which is related to the door that the, the Chandrian. Okay, so here's the thing the Chandrian want the door 
the mirror want the door and they both want the door. How do you open the door? You need to have lackless blood to open the door. Right? Yeah. That's right. Theory. Both Amir and Chandrians want to get in the door. Number one, the university wants to have Quoth or keep him under their jurisdiction because they know that he's a lackless. Therefore, he could open the door because they want to get in the door too. They all want what's in the door. What's in the door? The shapers? Mm -hmm. They're in the door. They both want They both want it. Both. I guess we just said they're both evil, possibly. Good, yeah, evil, right. bad, e bad, and bad. They all want, they all want it. So they see this dude and they're like, oh, this dude is a lackless. So they accept him in university, even though he has no money, he has no letter of recommendation, nothing. They're like, yeah, we'll pay for you to go to school so that we can keep an eye on you and have you in our, you know, under our sights, like power. Uh, so that explains why he would accept them into their school. They will need him in the future or they want to keep an eye on him or both. So it makes sense why they would do that. Also, why they didn't actually expel him after he called the winds at Ambrose because they could see that he has this naming power, which maybe you need that in some way to do something. Maybe once they get in the door, they need to do naming on the stuff to do something. I don't know. So they see that he has this power and he's a very talented namer, uh, just like Lyra, who might be great, great, great grandma, you know? Um, and then, uh, yeah, so they're like, well, we can't really expel him because we need to keep him here. All of this, keeping him at the school is because he has power, could open the door, could do stuff that they need him to do. Number two, the Chandrian slash Cinder <laughs> or Brayden. We don't know who Brayden is in relation to the mayor. Like he's in his court, but what is he doing? We don't know anything about him. He didn't like introduce himself in any way. So maybe he has some kind of influence on the mayor. And he's going to encourage him to get together with this lackless lady. I mean, the mayor's all like, it has to be this one lady that I marry because blah, 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 blah. It's the only one that fits all this criteria. Maybe someone put that idea into his head. They want him to hook up with lackless because they are gonna, keep tabs on all of the lacklaces. So like if they do have an heir, a child, it will be continuing the bloodline. And I don't know if the mayor is aware, like I don't know if he's working with Cinder or he just doesn't know anything that's going on. He's just being influenced. Because my question is why did he send such a derpy bunch or useless group of people to go catch the bandits? Because, okay, we have Quoth, who has no leadership experience whatsoever. Like, maybe he thought, oh, well, he has magic, so clearly he can go do this, but Quoth has no idea what's going on with any of that. You have Tempe, who is a dem mercenary that clearly has, like, no experience whatsoever. Like, I don't know if this is, like, his first job ever or what, but he doesn't know anything about, like, the real world. He can't speak the language, like, at all. So he's clearly, like, done, like, nothing before this. Fucking Dedan and Hespi, really? They are the most worthless people. Like they are incompetent. <laughs> and then Martin, and Martin's Martin's cool. He's fine. He's just there. So this not great group of people to go fight these bandits that are causing him such a problem. Why? You're the richest man in the world. Surely you can afford better mercenaries. Like you can be like, I want a dem mercenary with ten years of experience. Like he could pay for it. No, and he gets these like shitty people and sends Quoth to go with them? Is it because he wanted them to fail? Because he knows that Cinder is the bandit and their homies? Uh, but anyway, <laughs> in conclusion is that both groups, the Amir, who's at the university, and the Chandrian, who is Brayden, Brayden's part of them somehow, they both want the door and they're moving their pieces, which is both, kind of like from both sides, right? And then also Mrs. Lackless, or Mrs. Alvaron slash maiden name of Lackless. <laughs> they want they want her too, and possibly whatever their future children are doing. And so yeah, they're moving their pieces. It's a beautiful game. They want the door. The end. <laughs> and I'm right. Ninety percent sure that that's right. I mean, there are definitely parts of that that I think <laughs> are like spot on. What, what part is wrong? You don't know what part's wrong. It's all right. It's right. it's right. It's right. I'm right. Could be. It's right. Could be. No, it's yeah, right. I, I really right. like that idea of- like, I didn't explain it good and I didn't have page numbers like she did, but I'm right. 
ninety percent sure. I won't say a hundred because anything could happen. But so that was our top ten book club King Killer Chronicle conspiracy theories. Some of them I believe, some of them I don't believe, but they're all very fun to talk about. We do have some honorable mentions that we wanted to close out with. These are basically ones that were so whack that are absolutely not true and there's no evidence for whatsoever, but they did come up during book club. So we just wanted to, to throw these in there just as a side note for you guys. Yeah before no, we end. So any, anything's possible. Anything's possible. So let's just go through the, these. The runners up are Quoth, Denna, and Elodin are all Fae. Florian is Denna's mom. Florian is Elodin's mom. Florian is Elodin. Florian is Denna. Bast is Florian. Bast is Scarpy. Manette is Elodin. Chronicler is Ambrose. All Jakes are the same Jake. Everyone's mama is the same mama. Florian took out the Cathay guards so Quoth would have to meet it. That was our runners up. Uh, and if you want to hear more about that, let us know. But some of them is no reason whatsoever. So um, if you agree with our theories, let us know. If you disagree, let us know. I mean, you know, um, we, we admit that we we've are got a our two foil hats on. It's probably not true, any of it. But you know what? Will the third book ever be written? We don't know. So this is all we can do is just speculate. Yeah. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, check out our other videos if you would like. They're not. There's not another video like this one, but you know. We have some other King Killer Chronicles contents in some other videos. And um, happy conspiring, everyone.